Hello, friends. This is Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice. Our hosts are Six Kids in a Glue Gun, Lady in Red Crafting, and our guest host is Mama Can Make It. Today, you will find Terry painting a very large painting with three pumpkins and a scarecrow. Please check out the ladies in the playlist, the people in the playlist, the creators in the playlist. And for more pumpkin inspiration. And if you enjoy the video, make sure to share it with friends. So I think I can go in here and just put, I don't even know what. It's, yeah, it's wheat. Okay. Okay. Hold on. My arm's in the way, so you can't see. Oh, you know what would look good? Is if I had one hanging out his mouth. I don't know if I could do that, though, and make it look right. I'm kind of in love with my face, so it's like I don't want to mess with it at the moment. My order is situated, so if you ordered from me, I have not sat down and I w sat down and I put them all in piles, but now I need to go do the invoicing. Not too fun stuff. And I figured this would be an easy one to teach because they don't have to go get a cut out wood door hanger. They can just get around from anywhere. Actually, that looks pretty good. Let me make some small ones here. But I think I need to somehow incorporate one into his mouth. Hmm. Put one that's upside down here. Uh, actually, that looks really good like that. Oh. Man, sometimes I shock myself. I wanted something, you know, I do a lot of scarecrows, but they all look the same. And so instead of raffia, I thought maybe I could make it look like hay. Because at first, before I put the midnight sky in here, I was going to put an ear of Indian corn. And so the pumpkins. It turned out pretty good. Perfect. That makes him kind of look different. Uh, hi, Teresa. Um, Oh, thanks, Francis. It does look pretty good on there. Hi, Judy. This is my project today. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, I hope that um, your eye doctor goes good. Oops. Um, all right. So... I don't have a whole lot to finish up to get it finished, so got to do this 
white pumpkin and my stems, but I'm kind of don't want to overpower it with leaves. I think I'm just going, oh, you know what I could do? I kind of wanted to put a crow on here, but now I'm thinking that I just pull some weed out in between. And I don't want to get it too overly complicated, so I don't, maybe I'll extend that weed over there. And it also says, you know, there's always a reason why I say that, because I'm thinking, oh, if I just did that weed, that saves me some time from having to paint a crow. So maybe I'll do that. As I've been talking on the phone and watching the sellers in the group so that I can, if I sit here and think about what I'm doing, that's why I go live so much. If I sit and think about it, I overthink it and then it's harder to work out. I'm trying to figure out my project for tomorrow night on craft around the clock. I want it to be something like a cow. My grandma had a farm and she liked cows, so I think I'm in, I've only painted one actual looking decent cow in my life, so I might as well try it in front of everyone. And then this, I was going to do the bottom of a pumpkin, but I think I will put Maybe I'll make it the top of a pumpkin. Now that scarecrow, I did his eyes like that on a project from last year, so I hope they don't notice that. Hey, that's the same, same hair, same eyes, different haircut. You know, you get in the habit of doing things over and over and they always look the same, which is never a bad thing if you're doing craft shows, but when you got to come up with a new project each week and I'm on to what year? It was, it'll be three years in January since I started my painting group and it's like, uh, some days I'm like, ah. Oh, do I really want to continue? Do I really want to continue? I can't think of any more ideas some days. It's like, ah. And then I just come out here and if I quit thinking about it and just do it, it's not as bad, but. And I already know what I want to do for next week. Next week, I'm going to try to make a big Highland cow door hanger using that raffia that I bought in the dark browns and those colors. It's kind of a, wasn't supposed to be a neon green. It's turning out that way. But I've never been one for blue pumpkins, but I kind of really like in that one. It's kind of dark. I should have had it like a, when I paint the second one with the group, I may, I don't know, I kind of like the jewel tones though, because it goes with the, the jewel tones of the sky, maybe. 
maybe I'm just sitting here talking to myself, trying to talk myself into believing <laughs> what I should do, but I don't like the white one. Today's a pupil free day for us over here in Perth. So I took a day off and watching you. Well, you must be a uh, teacher, right, Ken Kinney? Uh, thank you, Teresa. Hi, Sandra. Thank you, Connie. Hi, Colleen. Chris Drank, how are you? I've been, I've been meaning. I always have good intentions and I never th follow through. Chris Strank was in my painting class uh, group, and I met her over at Crafters Convention. And, and we had a picture taken together, and I don't have that picture, so you'll have to send it to me. So we got to meet over there. So that was really fun. I met her and um, Sandra and and don't ask me names <laughs> but Chris is an amazing artist too she she made um, I didn't know goodie bags because th these were the first two retreats I'd been to and most of them handed out buttons and Chris made these painted skeletons on wood and they were just adorable. So Chris makes a lot of wood attachments for um, wreath makers. That's why she was there. I still don't know why I went. <laughs> okay, I'm going to dirty this up just a little bit. I want this I want the green just a little bit of green but I'm gonna dirty it up with a little bit of this mm. I mean I have this white squash still sitting in here and a white squash does not have much to it. I think I'm getting too many colors in it. A white squash is pretty much a white squash. And then on my original, I just want to put, um, so you know, like how when the night falls, I would re, <laughs> this was my first thing, was to put some raindrops, like it had been raining on top of the pumpkins. But then I got to remember that I got to teach it. And I don't know that I can teach that very well, but raindrops would look really like the dew. So I figured if I put just a little bit of um, diamond dust, just very sparsely on top of the pumpkins. But I'm not liking the white pumpkin. It's too white. It's too white. So what do I do with the white pumpkin? Not digging the green color. I think it needs to be in a rich jewel tone color. Don't like it. Any ideas? Um. Oh, they look like, oh, yeah, I've seen those. 
the white flying saucers one. Okay, Chris, that was it. I wanted to meet you in person. Hi, Betty. Um, the colors and the lines of the pumpkin are a mix of um, a mix of a dark red heritage brick with, here I am going to paint it. I think I added the milk chocolate to it to make it a little bit darker. I don't like my white pumpkin. And I'm trying to get that look of the Maybe. You know, where it's just a little bit green. But I love the colors of the other pumpkins, and I think this one looks washed out. If it was by itself, it would be okay. But I think it gets washed out by the jewel tone colors of the other pumpkins. that it blends in with the rest of them. Might have to sleep on this one. But if I, instead of this being the bottom, if I make this the top, I can cover a lot of it with my stem. Teresa, you're a fine artist. Fine artists kind of have an advantage over a decorative artist, I think. I don't know what, I mean, I don't study paint charts and all that stuff. Now that does take it down a little bit, but I, the other two are so pretty, it just doesn't look Can I make like a jade green pumpkin? <laughs> Actually, I want a jade green pumpkin with uh, some yellow. Can I do a jade green pumpkin? You think it'd look all right? Because a pump, I, I think I can do a green pumpkin. Because a green pumpkin, a pumpkin is green until it comes orange. Ah, uh, yeah, moss coming in my window. Great. Um, okay, can I do a jade green pumpkin, anybody? Uh, um, buttermilk with grooves being in cinnamon. Um, butternut squash colors of the cheese. Paint it sage green, Beverly says. Okay. Let, hold on. I don't shut this window now. I have all kinds of moss coming in. And then we don't want to get those June bugs. All right. It's going to be green. I think the jewel colors, it needs to be something vibrant. These two are perfect. Let me find a green that'll work. Like eucalyptus. 
Don't like eucalyptus. Don't like thicket. All right, let's try this one. If nothing else, I can always go back and make it white tomorrow, but I don't know. I just see so many jewel tones going on that I think if it was a different background, it might look different. It's like I'm making you all do my homework with me. But then I can put a lot of yellow up here around the stem, because I think kind of at a disadvantage. I have no way to look up an uh, aging pumpkin, but I, I think. And I'm glad I started this today. I was just, I had everything, all the things base coated and I thought ah, I'll just base coat it and then on Tuesday when I teach it it'll just all come to life I'm glad I didn't wait <laughs> this one's harder than what I ex or not harder but more time consuming than I thought I love the green better that yeah oh and so we have this gourd thing going on in my garden, and they are not pumpkin shaped. They are like a gourd shape, and they're starting to get big. They're kind of smaller on the bottom and get bigger, but they got stink bugs all over them. Really gross. No, I see something else in the YouTube. I'm not going to make it the bottom of a pumpkin. I'm going to change my mind here. Now it's not even having a shape at the moment. Joyce. Hi, Patsy. I do, too. The green's coming out better. Okay. A big old watermelon in the patch. All right, so let's put this stem. This way. Needs to go the other way. Maybe if I can get that line out there. Uh, I can't. Uh, 
All right, I guess it's going that way. On the one I do with them, I'll be able to take it a different direction. That for now. And right like that. Okay, it's gonna look like that for a moment until, now we're going to reverse and instead of shading, I get some highlighting in there that uh, highlighting just sets it up and it tells me whether I'm heading in the right direction or not paint up there too. bigger shading brush here. I think so too. The green is looking a lot better. And it just makes it more those, um, I need a black green. With the background being the way it is, it makes it look better. We got some Hauser dark green. Work. Going to Get some yellow in there, make it look not like a watermelon. It'll be even better. So I did a little thing while I was doing this. Every step I took on the face, mainly on the eyes, I took a different picture so that I could make like a little flip book and show the different stages. Should look good. Um, let me draw that because otherwise I'm taking that off. But otherwise, I think it's about done.
Maybe I should have had a purple one for the purple part of the sky. All right, it's looking like a watermelon. Okay, now I gotta leave my stem alone because it's too wet. I'm running out of tin foil. I'm running out of paper towels. Let's shade under that a little bit. Notice these flies. So that means cooler weather is in store, although it's been pretty darn nice around here. So they now make these really cool fly strips. My husband's been picking me one up the other day, but I don't think the flies are very impressed with it. It hasn't caught very many. Okay, let's put some yellow in here and see what we can do. Oops, this needs a little bit more going down into here. So that means I have to have two more ribs on here. Now let's shade or highlight a little bit more and then touch down in just a little bit of really light yellow.
This is, thank you guys for joining me tonight because sometimes that's the inspiration that I need to figure out what the heck I'm doing. It's beautiful. I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You guys helped me out so much. I had, oh, I'm happy with it. I can go and sleep easier tonight because I got Tuesday's project done and ready to go. That's exciting. That never happens. I do got to finish up my stem, but it's so wet in there. Hold on. So I gotta go in and take my liner brush around my oh, oh I love the green pumpkin. Thank you guys. You guys did it for me. Oh now I can rest. I can be done for the night. Tomorrow I'll go in and I think I will. I I don't think I want to add any leaves to it. Uh, thank you, Gwen. I'm just kind of winging it. Not, not that I actually know what I'm doing sometimes, but I'll go in and line it out tomorrow. Uh, I got something on my white star. But otherwise, oh, we need to shade it with some dark orange here. Actually, this was supposed to be my green one.